Alright, what's poppin' y'all? We back at it, man. We about to dig into what these skulls, what the skulls look like. Because, you see, they keep pulling this little bullshit, you know, when they dig them up out the ground, they check the skull, they're like, damn, this a woman, this is a male, this is Negroid, this is, you know, they, they can tell what race you are through your skull for years, years upon years, it's been the most simple, you know, most efficient way to get it done. But upon people getting their feelings hurt, or feeling like they're less indigenous, to that landmass because they dug up the bones and the bones did not match the modern people. Now, what is going on with these modern people? I have no idea. My hypothesis, this is my, this is nobody else. You know, you get what I'm saying. I believe that the whole world was one color, one species at one time. Now, it, there was no Adam and Eve type of situation where well, now, you could call Adam and Eve genes if that's what you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm getting from it is everybody got together and then they bottlenecked. Or they began to incest or they began to get together and stay too close and too tribal and keep it within the family. Causing certain genetic mutations, certain, certain melanin deficiencies, certain... You know what I'm saying? Just all type of problems when it happens when you keep copying the same chromosome, which at one time they were calling Mongol, or to be Mongol, or to have one less chromosome. You know, that had been defensive at one time. I mean, offensive at one time, not defensive, but offensive at one time. If you ever watched, uh, what's that shit? My girl Precious, you feel me? That's what she was calling the baby. You feel me? Disrespectful. But let's keep it pushing. It says the agrarians, you know what I'm saying, is the best tool of their bodies painted gay red, so happy red. That the agrarians had plenty of inventions and like to make new kinds of weapons and tools. They had great love for engraving and taste, which shall find a pronounced in later races of people and made quantities of flint points for these purposes, using them to draw just as we should use a pencil. These points were straight or curved and of all sizes. There were no such things as paper or parchment, so the artists of those days used the bones of reindeer on which to cut their designs. Otherwise, they employed the ivory from the tusk of elephants or the soft kind of stone called soapstone on the walls of their limestone caves and, and, can, and canvases. For their pictures, tools of great strength and sharpness were needed to begin to make statues and carved walls and paintings. And this must have been uh, many trials of false starts before the right tools for the new branch of art was discovered by the Grarians and Grecians I'm going to have to find out what that word is. Y'all going to have to work with me. Our Grenadians were a roaming race. And like all travelers who met strange people and customs, they copied the ideas and inventions of other folks and adapted them in their own end and thus became very clever themselves. We do not know much about the other races which they would meet on their travels except the Negro races living as the our Grecians did along the shores of the Mediterranean and the Neanderthal, who they drove away, seizing their hunting grounds and cave bone, cave homes. Still, no doubt, there were other differing peoples whom they met on their journeys. Once established their cave homes, they began to adorn the walls with engravings and paintings. You will wish to know how we are certain that the Decorations were the work of the Grecians and not of some other race of artists living in the I said, living at another date in the centuries of a thousand years ago, separating us from the Grecian age. When it comes to the date of reckoning, there is no way but to go back to the earth and try to uh, coax it to tell us the secrets. And four of the cave, the wall paintings were quite buried in the earth. The caves were, the soil was removed 
was found to contain tools such as were made by the Grecians and they were lying among the bones of a mammoth, lion, rhinoceros, bison, and reindeer. So it is evident that the paintings were made by people who threw down their broken and discarded tools on the floor with the bones of the animals and ate until the rubbish mounted so high that the work of their art, uh, artists was covered and forgotten. In other cases, there has... Uh, so as you see, we got hit with the hijack, they started saying. You know what I'm saying? They ate themselves out of the cave. Instead of just saying the wind blew the garbage and the bones and the dirt. But let's start to figure out what type of person was in these caves. Or these Grecian people. In the cave dweller. According to the custom of the time, ornaments and artifacts, evidently intended by their friends as provision for the future life, accompanied the skeletons and some of the bones found were stained with red ochre. At the base of the Aurignacian deposits of Grimaldi, and dating apparently from the very beginning of that, Fig, 15, profile and full-face views of the skull of the Grimaldi woman. After Keith, Epic, were found two skeletons which have aroused great interest among prehistorians. For they have been held to indicate the existence at that time in this part of Europe of representatives of a race which was neither that of Neanderthal nor that of Cro-Magnon. The skeletons belong to a youth and a woman, both of rather short stature, plate 25, and they present traits which have been interpreted as Negroid in character. It will be remembered that the Cro-Magnon race, with its Orinia, Interpreted as Negroid in character, it will be remembered that the Cro-Magnon race, with its Orinia culture, is supposed to have entered Europe from Asia by way of northern Africa and the old land bridges. Across to Italy, now in recent years there are coming to light all over Africa remains of a type of art, consisting mainly of engravings and paintings of animals which in many ways recall the remarkable cave art of the Upper Paleolithic in Europe. Mm -hmm. Interpreted as Negroid in character. So we got that right there. And you know, we read in our book, Ancient As Ancestors of the Britons, we'll get into that, who they were saying lived in the land before them. But let's get back into it. Check them out. They, it only gets better, baby. It only gets better, baby, with time. And from the farthest past. In South Africa, works of this character are attributed in part to those dwarfish, yellow-skinned, woolly-haired little hunters, the Bushmen, themselves undoubtedly a very ancient race, now nearly extinct. Moreover, C.E.R. Toyn of the physical peculiarities of the latter people are A. B. D. Finn, 16. Aurignacian and modern Bushman comparisons. A. Rushman woman. B. Bushman drawing of same. C and D. Statuettes in steatite from the Grimaldi caves. Shown clearly in the figures of very stout nude women, carved from ivory or soft stone, which have been found here and there in the Upper Paleolithic of Europe. Fig. 16. These facts taken in conjunction with the Negroid traits, ascribed to the two Grimaldi skeletons just mentioned, seem to hint at some African influence on our Ignatian art. Any more definite conclusion than this, however, we should hardly be justified in drawing as yet. At all events we have now reached the point, in our backward journey through time, when our Ignatian man first appears in Europe and takes the place till then occupied by the low-grade race of Neanderthal. As far as... Most ancient remains of man. The lead ore, barring a few fragments, it was smelted. Somewhere in the vicinity of the lower portion of this bundle 
was found a remarkably straight but otherwise not peculiar full-sized human male tibia and lower at some distance were portions of a mineralized lion skull in the vicinity there may have been found also one or two other human fragments but here much is uncertain the larger part of the bony contents of the main part of the cave was so mineralized that it passed for a good grade of zinc ore and was smelted as such Various poor tie-ons of the cave fillings, however, were poorer and were brought out and thrown on a dump where, covered by poor rock and debris thrown out subsequently, they still repose. The ground and the debris in the dump are still full of fragments and pieces of bone, teeth, chips of quartz, etc. Only traces of the great cave now remain in the mine, and as the work progresses they will disappear. The opposite wall of the mine shows an even larger old cavern, completely filled with less consolidated and somewhat darker materials than the surrounding rock. This cave has yielded no bones. The main part of the bone cavern was for a long time a habitat or a feasting place of the ordinary Africans, Bushmen, or Negroes. The larger bones were none of them brought in by animals, but were the remains of the repasts of the black men. A very large majority were broken for the marrow. Similarly broken human bones suggest cannibalism. There were apparently no human burials in the cave. How the strange Rhodesian skull got in is unexplainable. The skull was found alone in the lowest and most remote part of the cave. Some distance beneath consider able accumulations of soft, pure lead ore. There was no lower jaw. There was no skeleton. One human bone, the tibia, and parts of a lion's skull, it is well established, lay within 10 feet of the skull, but at a lower level. So like you said, we get into that more cannibalism. So we don't, we're going to get into what cannibalism equals to slavery in America and why every Negro tribe in America was enslaved underneath the name of cannibals. So we're going to get into that, y'all. Let me get back to work, and I'm going to catch y'all in a little bit.